Hey guys, it is July 13, 2022, which means the first JWST science images were just released in the past two days. And I haven't looked at them yet. I, I, I wanted to wait to even look at them until I was on camera with my students so that we could kind of react to these pictures together. So this is like your nerdy astronomy professor's version of a reaction video. All right, these um, JWST images have been a long time in coming, like decade in coming, right? Um, since when they began building this space telescope. We've been watching over the past several months as they've been calibrating the space telescope. We've seen some images, but these are the first science images. So I'm super excited. I have a, I, it's been hard to avoid them over the past few days. It's been all over the news. I, um, I've seen some thumbnails, not gonna lie. So I have a sense of what to expect, but here we go. Let's, let's check it out. JWST images. Okay. Okay. So I am seeing, all right, the deepest. Okay. What do we got here? So, so wowzers, this is, uh, comp it is okay. So this is, this image is uh, a deep, deep field image from the, from the Webb Space Telescope. And this naturally is, is reminding us of the, um, all right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna restrict this just to NASA's website so that um, I don't end up on all these like newspaper websites. Okay, so here we go. Wow, I'm gonna open this in a new tab. So this obviously calls back to the, the Hubble Space Telescope's uh, Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Okay, which is the deepest photo ever taken prior to this one. And what's really noteworthy to me is that the Hubble Ultra Deep Field was an image that they, they took that image over like 30 days. So they left their camera open for weeks and weeks to try to collect as many photons as possible from deep space. And this is an image, I don't know how long of an exposure this is, but the detail is incredible and I think illustrates uh, just how much more powerful the Webb telescope is. This is unbelievable. So what we're looking at here, right? This, for example, is a star in the in our galaxy, right? And there are a few others, like this is a star, anything that you see these diffraction fields. But all the other objects are galaxies, which is unbelievable. You can see how many galaxies we're talking about. Um, absolutely astounding and the, like again the detail in this image is blowing Hubble's deep field out of the water and I gotta believe that this is an exposure that didn't take months because JWST hasn't been around that long uh, another another thing that just stands out right away is actually um, I you can actually see there's a foreground galaxy here so this faint glob of white here is actually uh, an object and um, and you can undoubtedly see there is what's called a gravitational lens. So there's this smearing. You see this, especially right here. This is a single galaxy whose light is being smeared out by gravity of this foreground object. This, you can see the center of this foreground object right here. And that same galaxy is showing up on the other side. You see that over here? Um, and so this is, this is an amazing, undoubtedly the, the greatest photo of a gravitational lens that's ever been captured. I mean, look, you can see another galaxy here that's being smeared out. Um, at the same time, you can see plenty of other galaxies. This is unbelievable. Honestly, you could just, you could just deep dive into these unbelievable spiral arms. Wow. I, I can't believe this is one of their first images. I mean, you got to understand that the Hubble Ultra Deep Field was like after Hubble was around for like a decade. They were like, okay, now we're going to push the limit of what this thing can possibly do. And it's it's almost like on on your first day of school, like you just like showed, you know, as a freshman in high school or something, you just like kicked the butt out of the, you know, quarterback who's like the fourth year, you know, fifth year senior, you know. Uh, this is unbelievable. Okay, we got to we got to keep going though. That's that's amazing. All right, I am I am surprised. I'm not going to lie. Okay, that's that's one. Uh, there's more. There's more. Um, I got to go to this one. What are we looking at here? 
I mean, obviously this is a beautiful picture, but what are we looking at? The Carina Nebula. Okay, so what, what you got to do when you see these things is you Google the thing. Carina Nebula. So you can see what does this actually look like, you know, in the sky to an amateur, right? So if you were to look at this with an amateur telescope, Carina Nebula, um, this is what we're talking about. It's a huge nebula in the sky. You, see, you can tell it's huge because you see all the stars? Like this is a wide field image. Someone's got their camera in their backyard, right? And um, you, so there's, that's what it looks like to, to like an ant. It's, it's all red it, it, to our eyes. Now we got to look at it from HST, the Hubble Space Telescope. And now you get a sense because this thing is so massive, there's lots of different pictures of the Carina Nebula. Uh, from Hubble, but you get a sense this is kind of what standard Hubble pictures look like, right? The way they 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 would colorize all the different filters, right? So you see lots of different things. It's a huge dust cloud, looks like a star formation region, okay? A place where stars are forming out of this collapsing dust cloud. All right, and uh, let's look at let's look at. Uh, I wonder if we can even find like what part. Well, maybe it'll show us in here. So this is a region of the Carina Nebula observed by the James Webb Space Telescope. And uh, obviously it's beautiful. One of the things that you'll notice because JWST is operating farther into the infrared than, than Hubble did, right? And infrared allows you to see through dust. And so what was obscured here in Hubble, and you can't see inside those clouds. You can only see one or two little stars inside the clouds. You'll notice in this JWST image, we can see tons of stars inside the cloud. And so we're going to get levels of detail that you can actually see through this thing. Not to mention that we're seeing way more stars, way more detail because it's a larger telescope. We have a higher resolution. Wow. I want to see more of that. I want to see more of that. I'm wondering if, um, now this, this is a nice illustration. These are, this is the, the ring ne Southern ring nebula. What's interesting here is it's showing how these objects look so different depending on what part of the visible or, or, or invisible spectrum you're looking at, the light spectrum. So on the left, you have near infrared, that is just a little ways redder of red. And then you have mid infrared. Now we're getting super far, you know, we're getting like heat vision, you know, what you might call thermal camera vision um, on the right, right? And, and JWST is capable of making observations in both of those areas. And you'll notice that you can kind of see through the cloud when you're using more like mid infrared light. Um, wow. And you can see the challenge then of making color pictures because like, well, how do you take all these things that aren't even visible colors and turn them into a single image? It's not easy or obvious. Well, that's, that's a beautiful picture. I mean, I don't know what else I'm going to learn from looking at that other than that's amazing. And we're going to have lots of, of amazing things to come. There is uh, I, I know there's one other one. I saw it pop up in the news today. And it had to do with extrasolar planets. And I think I had heard that they were they were teasing this before it even uh, was released. They were talking about exoplanet spectrum. And I just caught it in the news today. Here it is. Webb telescope reveals a steamy atmosphere. Now this is that. Oh, yeah. OK, this is a big deal. And I have not looked at this up close yet. Now, before I even look at it. Okay, in the astronomy class, we talk about how, how the atmosphere of an exoplanet, a planet around another star, could be observed and measured. And you can see in, uh, in the spectrum uh, what we call biosignatures, or you can see spectral evidence, like little fingerprint markers in the light that show you whether there is uh, evidence of water or evidence of light, uh, life or evidence of, of certain indicators like methane or other types of gases. Um, and so you can see that that's what they have already done with JWST on this particular exoplanet. Now notice it is a hot gas giant exoplanet. We're not talking about an Earth-like planet. We're talking about a gas giant. This is like a Jupiter-like planet, okay, which is hot, meaning it's close to its star. So we don't have any planets like this in our solar system. And uh, it has a remarkable feature. It can, it can, this is, by the way, in the background, is not a real picture of this exoplanet. That is like an artist's uh, rendition of what this planet could look like. But what they're illustrating is that JWST is capable of measuring the spectrum of the star. 
uh, I'm sorry, of the planet, even though it's so close to the star. That's extremely difficult to do. Hasn't really been possible, barely, barely been possible before because the planet is so close to the star from our point of view. How do you separate the spectrum of the planet from the star? So well, JWST is capable of doing that because of its extremely high resolution. And here's what we see, okay? This is the amount of light. This is the wavelength. So this is a spectrum. And you can see these little bumps. Now the white is the actual data, the white dots with their lines, okay, the error bars. The blue is their fit. And what they're seeing is these little bumps. And those bumps correspond to where you would expect to see a bump due to water. And so what they're saying is that they are able to detect the presence of water in the spectrum of the atmosphere of this extrasolar planet, which is quite remarkable, right? That water has always been like, well, if we can't detect water, then we'll never detect life. That's like the first step in a sense. If you can detect water, then, then let's, let's explore a place even more. Again, this is a hot Jupiter. This isn't a place where anyone expects there to be life really. But it's a demonstration of the capability of JWST to detect water in extrasolar planet atmospheres. It's also noteworthy, I think, that this planet is so incredibly far away. This is a thousand light years. Um, and you can see it says here, the strength of the signal web detected hints at the significant role the telescope will play in the search for potentially habitable planets. Wow. Amazing. Cool. I think, you know, for me, the coolest is this, this deep field image. Uh, obviously, de detecting exoplanet atmosphere is impressive. It's going to continue to be impressive as they, as they study more exoplanets and revisit more exoplanets. But in terms of just a fun picture to look at, man, that deep field is worth uh, spending some time in, as well as like a side-by-side -side comparison with uh, the Hubble ultra deep field. Um, it's going to be exciting to see as the stuff keeps pouring in. Um, and I hope you're checking out the news and following along. And uh, I hope this was fun to share this uh, discovery together. All right, we'll catch you later.